Prairie friends. How are you doing today? Happy Monday. I'm so excited to be with you today because we have a new season in our church. I'm sure you know we are now in the season of Lent. So we have so much to talk about today. So um, I thought we could start with the Our Father today. We haven't prayed that one together in a few weeks. So would you pray with me? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Boys and girls, I just want to dive right in today because we have a lot to talk about since we're in the season of Lent. This last Sunday, yesterday, we celebrated the first Sunday of Lent in our church. And as you know, I think most of you know, the season of Lent is the time of preparation before we get to the season of Easter. So Lent is a season of repentance, of preparation, of cleansing. It's really a time to grow. Lent is a time to grow closer with our relationship with the Lord. And time to grow is always a good thing, isn't it? So we have 40 days or five weeks to grow in our relationship with the Lord. And before we get started talking about Lent and the gospel for this week, I have a question of the day for you today, all right? The question of the day today what is a tough challenge that you've had to endure? That's a good one, right? Really think about that for a moment. All of us have challenges in life, things that come our way that are difficult, things we don't want to do, but we know we have to, things that are hard. Have you had to endure something like that before? And parents, Adults who are watching this with the students, I'd love you to think about that for yourselves as well. Um, so when my fingers get to three, I want you to take some time and talk about that with each other, all right? What is a tough challenge that you've had to endure before? And not just that, but how did you get through it? How did you get through that tough challenge? And what happened when you got to the other side of that tough, very hard thing? right? Were you stronger, maybe? Were you changed at all from that tough thing that you had to endure, that you had to get through, right? So let's talk about that together for just a moment with the people that you're watching this video with. So go ahead and pause the video, take as much time as you need, and when you're all done, hit play, and I'll be right here waiting for you when you come back, all right? Here we go. One, two, three. Hello! You're back, and I'm right here, and I'm so excited that you had some time to talk to each other about a challenging time in your lives, which we all have. As a matter of fact, it kind of feels like we're going through one right now, and we've been going through one for almost a year now, haven't we? I was with a group of students that are preparing for sacrament preparation just the other day, and one of my friends named Crosby said, this is one of the hardest things we've ever had to do, is go through this time of COVID. But he knew that God was up to something. Crosby used those exact words, and I thank him for sharing that with me, for reminding me that God is always up to something when he has us go through hard times. And it's true. I wanna tell you about a time when I was about your age and I had one of those challenging times when I was about your age, I didn't know how to swim. And not only did I not how to know how to swim, I was afraid of the water when I was your age. I would see my friends um, going to pool parties and going to the swimming pool in the summertime and having so much fun. And I was always sitting on the edge, just putting my feet in, really scared to go in the water. So one day my mom, signed me up for swimming lessons. And it was one of the scariest days of my life. I thought, but 
Getting through swimming lessons was definitely a hard challenge, but from the first day of swimming lessons, our teacher had told us to look across to the other side of the pool. And when we looked across to the other side of the pool, we could see the highest diving board that I had ever seen in my entire life. It makes my stomach do flip-flops right now, even thinking about looking at that high diving board. And our swimming lessons teacher told us that on the last day of swimming lessons, we would all be expected to jump off that high diving board that was on the other end of the pool. And I almost jumped out of that pool and ran for the hills on that day. My goodness, I cannot describe to you the fear I had inside of me thinking about having to jump off the high dive at the swimming pool at the end of swimming lessons. And as the day grew closer and closer, oh, the fear inside of me grew. I think sometimes I was paralyzed with fear, not wanting to eat, not wanting to sleep. It's all I could think about. But I knew that I had to do it. And somewhere deep and down inside of me, I think I knew that I could do it. I was really scared. It didn't take away the fear. But on the last day of swimming lessons, as I watched one friend climb up those stairs and jump off the high dive, another friend climb up those stairs, those tall, tall ladders, all the way up to the highest high dive in that pool and jump off the ladder, being so brave. I hoped and I prayed that I could be as brave as well. Well, when my turn came, I was definitely scared and my knees were definitely shaking. And I'm not sure I even remember how I got to the end of that diving board. I don't even remember walking there. But I do remember the feeling of jumping off. I remember just a deep feeling of trust. And believe it or not, not just fear, but excitement too. When I, my feet hit the water and I came up for a breath after jumping off and I felt all my pieces and I realized I'm still alive, I was so happy that I had come to the end of that challenge, that I had actually did it. I jumped off the highest dive in our swimming pool and I made it. And I actually felt, I felt great. I felt strong. I felt excited. I felt like I could do anything at that moment. I'll never forget that feeling because I was really nervous and I was really scared and I really didn't want to do that really hard thing that I knew I had to do. I knew I was being taught and told and challenged to do it. And sometimes when we have to do things that are hard and challenging and things we don't really want to go through, when we get to the other side of it, we are stronger and we are better. And I hope when you think about that challenging thing that you've done and that you had to do, or maybe it's something that you're being challenged with having to do right now during this time, when you get to the other side of it, you'll be stronger and you'll be better. And not only that, but because of who we are as Catholics, we can do something special. We can invite the Lord to be with us during these hard and challenging times. Whatever the challenge is, whether it's a spelling test that you just don't know if you could ever memorize all of those spelling words, or a math problem that you're not sure that you can get through, or a tough family situation, an illness, or this time of COVID. All of these things are hard things, and in life we have hard things that we'll be challenged to do. But I invite you in the next time you have something hard and challenging to invite the Lord in. Because the Lord has been through challenges as well. In the gospel from this week, from Mark chapter 1, verses 12 through 15, we have here about Jesus going through a test of his own. Jesus was called out into the desert by the Spirit. He was led out away into the desert, right? The desert is a dry and barren place. And we hear the Spirit leading Jesus out into the desert and Jesus being there for 40 days. Can you imagine 40 days alone in the desert, fasting and praying? 
this was a real test for Jesus. Not only was he alone in the desert, but he was also tempted while he was out there in the desert. He was tempted to do things that he didn't want to do. And Jesus was God, so he didn't have to go through those temptations and through this test. But in Jesus' humility and his humanness, he wanted to show us how to go through hard times and how we are all tempted as humans, right? So Jesus is in the desert during this time of preparation and cleansing for him for 40 days, right? What a long time to be out there. But as he was out there, he was made stronger through spending time in prayer with his Father, with God the Father. His mission, his reason that he came to earth became clearer and more defined. He was given his mission by God the Father while he was out there getting ready to start his ministry, his time of being with the people and healing the people and going out and serving the people and teaching them about his Father's love. And oftentimes when people are given their mission and they have their mission from God, they become closer to God. When they're truly out in the world doing their mission, they feel very close to God, right? Maybe during this 40 days of Lent, God will give you your mission. This might be a trying, testing time. But don't forget, in the Bible, um, the number 40 is really important in the Bible. And there, as there are 40 days of Lent, right, coming up, Jesus was in the desert for 40 days. In the first reading, oh my goodness, it was so neat how the first reading, I hope you get a chance to read the first reading as well, because in the first reading we hear the story of Noah. I'm sure you know this story. The story of Noah and the ark God took 40 days and he flooded the earth, right? And Noah and the people that were with him on the ark and all the animals that were there had to spend 40 days in the floods waiting for the rains to stop as the earth was cleansed and made anew. And in the first reading, we hear how God made the promise of the rainbow. He brought his covenant, his promise to never flood the earth again, right? To always look for the good. And whenever we see that rainbow, we remember God's promise with the people. Um, another way that 40 is important in scripture, in the Bible, is the Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 days. Not days, not months, but 40 years looking for the promised land that God promised them that they, it would be there for them, right? And then, of course, in the, in the reading today, in the Gospel from Mark, we hear about Jesus in the desert for 40 days. As we begin the season of Lent, right? There are three things that we try to focus on in Lent. Okay? There are three things that during these 40 days we try to do to grow our relationship with God. One of those things we do is pray. Okay, We work on prayer. So you could think of a way to add some special prayer, some time with the Lord into your day. Right? That's a, that's a good one to do during Lent. In these 40 days, something else we try to do is we try to fast. We work on fasting. And fasting often... Um, means giving up something to eat or something we like, right? But there are a lot of ways to fast, aren't there? Um, something that I'm working on during this Lent is I'm trying to fast from getting upset when I'm driving my car. <laughs> Believe it or not, I sometimes get really upset when I'm driving my car. I really don't get upset that often, but when I'm driving my car and somebody cuts in front of me or somebody's driving crazy, I don't know why, but I just get upset. So I'm really trying to fast from that. I'm really trying to give up getting upset driving in the car and just pray for the people that I'm driving with, right? Give a lot of grace to people. It's hard right now. Times are hard and challenging. So I really need to not get upset. I'm fasting from that right now. And also in Lent, we really try to fast from eating meat on Fridays, right? Another thing we're doing in Lent, the third thing, we try to work on is almsgiving. Right? Almsgiving is a way to sacrifice something or maybe fast from something. Pray about it first. Pray about fasting from something. And then give a little bit of extra right? Whether it's your time to someone who's in need, whether it's a talent that you have, maybe you're really good at reading and you can read to some of the littler children in your neighborhood safely though, right? 
maybe it's giving something monetarily as a family. If you do decide to do something almsgiving, I'm going to link this flyer onto um, the flop note for today. And it just has some ideas. In our church in San Francisco de Jesus Parish, we're doing two things for almsgiving this Lent. Right? We want to support the Flagstaff Family Food Center. So if you decide to fast from something and you have some extra monetary donations, we'd like you to um, really support the Flagstaff Family Food Center. There is an organization in our town that is feeding hungry people every day right here in Flagstaff. So this is a way to help locally. This is a way to help people globally who are hungry by supporting CRS Rice Bowl. And CRS stands for Catholic Release Services, all right? And on both of these um, little areas of the flyer, there are websites that you can go to to learn more how to help people glo globally, CRS Rice Bowl, or locally, the Flagstaff Family Food Center, all right? So that's what our parish is working on, but there are many, many ways to support people with your almsgiving during Lent, okay? So three things we're working on. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. When we were together, I showed you this calendar. Do you remember? I linked it. I'll link it again in case you um, don't have it yet. But I'm working on my things that I'm doing. A little bit of prayer, a little bit of fasting, a little bit of almsgiving. Every day that I do something, I color in the cross, right? This is the one I'm on today. So I'm working on these. I need to get a little bit in gear now on my prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, right? But I hope you're keeping your calendar and keeping track of the things you do. And we'll um, compare our calendars at the, end of the, at the end of Lent when we get to Easter, right? And there's one more thing I wanted to tell you about. In our church, there's a beautiful tradition um, that we do. Um, on the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday, which has already passed, but I wanted to um, share it with you. It's called Burying the Alleluia. <laughs> and we're already in Lent, so I'm actually not supposed to say that word anymore. Did you know that during Lent, we don't say the Alleluia or sing the Alleluia at all during Mass? We don't sing the glory to God either. And that is because those are words of praise and happiness and joy. And we want to be reminded during Lent that we're in a time of um, just kind of repentance and preparation. So during Lent, there is a beautiful tradition to, it's called burying the Alleluia, right? So I'm, I put this page onto the flock note, the email that your family got. And if you want to, you could do this as a family. It's kind of a fun tradition. Um, to remind us um, about Lent. So um, what you could do is you could color this page. You could fold it up or shrink it down or just leave it the size it is. Or you could even cut out this part right here, which I might do when I go bury the Alleluia. Um, and I wondered if you'd like to join me. Um, I'm going to go find a place to bury the Alleluia. And um, I thought you might like to help me find a place. Right? Then maybe you can remind me where I buried it at the end of Lent so we can take it back out. Um, because on Easter, when the first celebration of Easter comes on Easter Vigil and we sing Alleluia again, oh, it feels so good to be able to sing that and say that word again. This word of joy and praise and thanksgiving to the Lord for all he's done for us. All right? So um, maybe you can come with me right now and we'll go bury the Alleluia. All right? I'll see you next time. I hope you have a great day. 